the, the businesses are closed, the schools are closed. And that is 97 days. It's almost 100 days. Wow. Yeah, I, it, feels like a, it feels like about a year. Well, honestly. it is. <laughs> it may actually be a year before it's over. <sighs> yeah, so survival mode we are. So Where one, are of, you? one are you? of the things I, I was going to touch on with you is that there's so many relationships I know that um, have been affected by this and you know some good some bad but um mostly bad <laughs> and, exactly. and i think it's because people living together for you know on top of each other for 100 days 70 days uh, yeah and kids kids are really struggling oh sure yeah. And with that, I'm going to start this. Hey there, this is Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, the Women's Broadcast TV Network, womenontv.tv and IT247. So we all last got together in 2018. Uh, it was an interesting show. And I, I found Dr. Nancy Pierce, uh, who I always admired because I liked her hair. I found her in, in the lobby of LA Talk Radio, and, and she was sitting there cute. And I'm like, who's this cute young lady? I had no idea she was a doctor. So I got, I got to have you on the show. And then uh, you know, we started talking and then I'm like, well, I got to have my friend Mike on because Mike, Mike hits the other side. He's my fellow journalist friend. So here we are together again uh, during a pandemic. With a lot more hair. Yeah. Mike, Mike's got the, the Grizzly Adams look. And then Nan, where are you? Are you in, where are you, Santa Barbara? Are you in Northern California? I'm in Northern California. Oops. just. Cut that off there. Hold on here. So it, oh. it's very interesting and where everybody is. Uh, so Dr. Pierce, talk about what you've been seeing because normally you would be, you'd be on a cruise. You'd be in another country right now. Talk about that. Right now I'd be in Jamaica. Yes. <laughs> right this minute. Wow. <laughs> this is a, a sad week. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I had, I mean, really, I had a cruise planned in the spring. I had, um, this this uh, exotic lifestyle retreat for women um, and those who adore them planned this week. Then I was supposed to be in Naughty New Orleans in July. They had to move it to August. And I don't even know if that's going to happen. Then there was another cruise for in Greece in the fall. And so it's like you know and these are I mean obviously they're enjoyable experiences, but they're my work. That's my profession is to teach, you know, in all kinds of exotic places. So. So my exotic place is now Zoom. <laughs> your, your, your cruises sounded like so much fun too. And I, when last time I heard about them, I was like, oh, I want to do it too. It'd be fun to go with my partner or something. But would you ever want to go on a cruise again? I mean, don't you think it's, it's so scary and dangerous well, now with the, think, with the confining people? And yeah, I think we've had a big awakening about that. You know, about, I mean, I think what we're discovering is that there's, there are, not it's not uncommon to have an epidemic aboard cruise ships and so you know when you think about that I mean I think for me as because I'm a, a medical professional as well and so to this I think has brought to light how cavalier we have been about influenza every year yeah and um and other communicable diseases that really wipe a lot of people out and you know especially influenza a lot of children die from that and people don't kind of think about that so all of the things that we're doing right now to the extremes but washing our hands more diligently i mean that's like common sense right but we're having to show videos to people about how to wash your hands so where did we lose sight of the fact that passing along these viruses isn't something to be taken lightly. You know, people go, well, hey, you know, this is just the flu. I mean, we, we lose 60,000 people a year here from the flu. What's the big deal? And I'm like, well, that should be a big deal all by itself. And now we're at 100 and almost 30,000 in three months, whereas a flu season is generally six months. And so it's, you know, I mean, it's, I think we're learning a lot. Um, not hugging, not shaking hands. Those are traditions that I think are going to go by the wayside. And then condensing 2,000 people on a boat where they're all breathing the same air, they're, they're drinking the same water, they're in close proximity. Um, I, I think there's, you know, there's going to be some big changes come from this. 
And you've been going on that cruise ship for what, 10, 11 years? And then also my part, uh, my, uh, one of my co-hosts is a performer on the cruise ship. So she was on Norwegian Carnival. She's done that for like the last five years. So she got back into town just in time going back from, um, she was in Czech, uh, the old Texas Lafayette. Uh, she was in Slovenia um, performing. And then she just happened to have her ticket booked before all this hit. And I met her a year ago, so she got back into town, into the country just in time. Uh, so if she had gotten gone back a day later, she would have been stuck outside the U.S. But you know, she's grounded, so she's been on my shows. So we've been talking about this, and she was in our workshops last year in Tennessee this time. And it's interesting because it's a year later. Because uh, for in case some of you that don't know, we're at 4.6 million views, 700, 750,000 and 233 views. We went up another 3,000 overnight. We keep going up between one and 7,000 views each day still. Last year, we only had 2 million views this time. So it's interesting to see how everything's progressed because I'm always going by, where was I this time last year? What was right. going on? Well, I was still in Tennessee for another two days. And then I start to make my way back and I'm starting to see the changes because I started telling everybody about this October 3rd of 2018. So. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Pierce, I'm, I'm sorry that you couldn't get on your cruise because I was reaching out to those cruise ships last January. Yeah. Get their attention on the hand sanitizers. And if you remember, I had that hand sanitizer on my show. Remember when, with the vodka and everything and the restroom kit. And so I was telling people back there, but as you were saying, how do you tell people what you're supposed to do anyhow? I learned to wash my hands when I had my ranch going back to 28, 23 times a day because, you know, I was doing things with manure. We had all kinds of animals and you didn't want to have anything passed from a horse to you, vice versa, because this virus came from animal to animal, animal to human, human to human, human to airborne. And then now there's another strange that France just found a day ago. And they don't know what it does. One attacks the brains. One can be transmitted sexually now. Well, they're not, they're not sure about the sexual transmission yet, but they know that it's just, it's found in semen. But that doesn't mean that it's always, um, it, it's not, doesn't mean it's always transmissible. So we still are, we still are looking at that, but it's certainly something to consider. I mean, any body fluid, but it's, you know, the, the thing is it has to get, really it has to get into your respiratory system. So it's you know if it's if semen is just going into a condom or it's going into another body part that's not your respiratory system chances are it won't cause a problem we don't know so we're it'll be interesting to see how that comes about but they you know the viruses are smart um they and they're changing it's they've been around changing. since the beginning of time we're not going to get rid of them we have to learn how to interface with them and you know, these, these things. I did want to mention, though, the last cruise I was on, which was in the fall, um, there was hand sanitizer everywhere on the ship. So, so that was the first time. So even in the fall of 19, they were, and, and there was a person standing there, like when you came into the dining hall, when you went into any room, like the... Um, the where the lounges or any room, there would be a a representative of the ship standing there asking you to please use the hand sanitizer. What month was that? That was September. October. Okay, because wow. this is what I've been able to find. It's the end of September, I knew it was here in Vegas. Remember, I've been sequestered right up until I started, I sequestered myself September 23rd. Mm -hmm. The reason I remember the date, because my birthday is September 26th, and then my, my friend left the house. Not that much. Is your birthday September 26th also? Yes. Mine is too. Wow. I know. That's, that's why we get along. <laughs> I'm September 1st. So almost, almost a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> yeah. so, but when it comes to that, uh, yes, you know, I knew from two of my Republican friends, they said they, they were here at the end of September. They were here September 28th in Vegas, and they were sick for four weeks when they went back and they go, we were a, a lot of people, we were at an Asian convention in Las Vegas and I was supposed to go see them because I haven't seen them since I graduated high school. And it was one of the things where I just didn't want to go anyplace because I was just hunkered down doing stuff at that point. And he goes, Brian, I knew when we had it and a lot of them went back to Italy because a lot of them worked in a lot of the factories in Greece. So what does that tell you, Dr. Pierce? 
And so for someone to have the hand sanitizer on the ship at that point, somebody knew something. Yeah. What well, there for? It's, there's, a, there's some interesting videos that watch how these ships seeded all these different islands and all these different areas. There was just one ship in particular that they followed to see, and they were letting sick people off in, on different islands, not knowing what they had, not saying, and then those people would go to the hospital and die. So everybody at the hospital is being exposed. And so it's like these little seeds of virus being planted all along the track of the, the cruise ships. And so I think there, you know, that's going to be, be become, um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of them go out of business, actually. Because yeah, what's she, uh, what how, Jessica, can, how can anybody get on a ship right now? Well, they'd well, have to just redo well, it what, a lot. They'd have to redo do a lot of things, isn't it? Yes. Well, like what the Jessica dining was hall. telling me on the ships is that the, they're preparing two smaller ships, obviously with less people, because she's that performer. So mm -hmm. you have some sort of entertainment. So no matter what, she was saying her friends on the ships no matter what they had to be, they had to put on their smiling faces, even though some of them were locked into their small little tiny cabins. And it wasn't fun for them because they couldn't get off. And then right. some of them were on those floating ships where they knew something was going on, but they weren't getting the news. I mean, how sad is that, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been just a global shit show. <laughs> you know, it's just been uh, one thing after another. It's crazy. So have you seen that there's a, that there's a change in relationships that are going on during, because of the virus that you can attribute to, you know, the oh. being sequestered and all? I think there's two part, two parts to that. One is the fear and the stress. So even if we weren't sequestered, just because a lot of people aren't sequestered who are essential workers. So they're still having to go out in the world and work every day. And yeah. so the, the, the anxiety level is very high. The fear is very high. The, the confusion of information that we're getting makes that even worse. And then those people come home. For example, my husband's a physician. And so he's a medical doctor out there working. And he was one, one of the first people to test somebody for COVID in our town. And so every day he's testing people who are sus suspected to have COVID-19. So when he, so we've had to completely revamp our routine. So when he comes home at the end of the day, it's, you know, he dresses outside, he takes his clothes, he goes directly to the washing machine. I have the shower going for him so he doesn't have to touch the handle and he goes directly to the shower and he cleans himself off before I even go anywhere near him and and so there's you know there's so there's that stress of what if he gets sick you know 20,000 plus healthcare workers have died you know that's that's it's almost 20 percent of the deaths have been healthcare workers wow. so you know there there's these high-risk professions and then if you don't have a boss that protects you, you're more afraid. And so then you bring that fear and anxiety home to your relationship and the other person perhaps is stuck at home all the time and, and, and feeling isolated. So then, you know, whatever underlying conflict people had, it's being exacerbated now. So people are discovering that they, that, that, that little bit of, anxiety tension that they might have had in life now it's an anxiety disorder any kind of conflict you had with your partner now it's a relationship problem yeah. so it, it, it's it, everything's magnified so dr pierce talk about your 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 background how did you get started with everything and then including your own radio show that you always do also well um i've been a nurse for four decades. So I started off as a registered nurse and a health educator. I man I ran and I had my own diabetes practice for 13 years. So I took care of thousands of people from little babies to 90 year olds, uh, ran diabetes camps for kids. Always, I've always been in the education mode and trying to empower people to take better care of themselves. And then I got into yoga 
And so I went back to school and became a yoga therapist and a massage therapist, but mostly yoga. So, so then I used yoga as a healing tool. And then I had a friend ask me to write a column for her in an online news magazine, uh, a sex and relationship column, because, you know, every, everything I'm doing as a healthcare person has to do with people's relationship, either with themselves or others. And so I started writing that. And in doing that, I started looking at the difference between erotica and porn. This is a twisty road. And in doing that, I decided that we needed an erotic film festival. <laughs> so my husband goes, well, go make one. So 18 months later, I created uh, Eroticos Film Festival that we held in Jamaica in 2012. And in doing that, I had to get judges and I met my mentor, Dr. Ava Cadell, who's a clinical sexologist in LA. And she was um, adamant that I go back to school again and get my doctorate in human sexuality, become a clinical sexologist. and bring forward all of my other background into helping people live full, full, healthy, happy lives, including their sexuality. So that's what I do. I run events all over the world and I teach couples and singles and people how to get, how to heal shame and how to embrace their natural self, their authentic self. And, and Mike, uh, just to remind everybody, give your background of, uh, I call them Mike Szymanski's dual worlds. <laughs> of, of the Mickey Ski World? <laughs> yeah, your Mickey Ski World and then your regular world at being a regular movie critic and journalist. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's why I'm on here mostly is the, 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 the mainstream um, film criticism stuff that I've done. Um, I write for the art of Montague.com, just had a, the, profile about Rachel Mason that uh, who was one of our past uh, uh, interviewees that we did together but my Mickey Ski side um, ha has I have books that are now on Amazon um, seducing a straight man and other provocative titles that are um, uh, gay oriented erotica uh, and um, uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek how-to books this seducing a straight man has has you know like uh, steps to, but also it's mostly um, just erotic stories. Um, but uh, there's there's some funny funny things on uh, uh, where when you're with a, a straight guy, at what point does it get too far, and and when you can take advantage of that. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so those are all in, in, uh, available. There are seven seven books of my Mickey Ski books on uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, and you can um, uh, get them on Kindle too, as well as paperback. So, Michael, what have you been hearing uh, as far as a lot of your friends? Because you're in Los Angeles right now. What have you been hearing about relationships on your side? Well, the reason, I mean, that's why I wanted to ask about it, because the reason I'm bringing it up is there's a number of um, long-term relationships that I know of that are breaking up or uh, or changing in different ways. Um, in in one case, uh, uh, a couple that have has a three-year-old baby who, you know, seemed to be getting along pretty well. Uh, they were living together for 70 days that neither of them were getting out of the house except for him to go get groceries. And they... Uh, are at that one at she just finally said you know what i can't take you being on playing games all day meaning to the husband and not paying attention to your three-year-old son i want to leave i'm out of here and and it was just like a shock and it's a shock to everybody who's known them um in another case a, a gay couple who've been together 26 years um the the uh one partner decided to bring home uh, a young man who said i'm in love with him now and he's going to live here and uh and you know you have to deal with it and so uh yeah those are big deals yeah i don't know nancy if you have any 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 insight into you know like how people how people should deal with that or or you know if there's ways of even coping with that kind of thing uh you know, redefining relationships. But obviously what you're saying, I mean, your point is that this pandemic and the sequestration has exacerbated, obviously, the underlying problems. Right, right. 
not, I don't believe that it's created any new problems. Um, you know, I mean, my husband and I've been together for 34 years or something of that nature. And it, 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 the only thing it's done for us is we've just had to recognize in ourselves that we're stressed, but, but we as a couple aren't stressed. We use each other as our de-stressors. Yeah. But those are, but those are techniques we've been using for years in collaboration rather than in competition. And I find that a lot of couples are, are live in competition. Who's getting the most love? Who's getting the most attention? Who's winning? Who's making more money? I mean, there's just always this kind of a undercurrent of competition. And when you have that within your relationship, when you're stressed, then, then there becomes a competition. Who's the most stressed? <laughs> Rather than both of you just acknowledging your own part of that and acknowledging each other in a loving way, but you don't have to fix it. You just have to be present. So that's a lot of the counseling I'm doing right now for couples is to try to give them tools to ha have their experience and certainly be you're entitled to feel how you feel. You just want to make sure you're not inflicting that pain onto someone else in a, in a, demeaning or or unhealthy way you know express yourself don't inflict it i guess is the is the message but you know the but again i think these things just bring out i've i've i know a lot of teenagers that are just absolutely going mad yeah uh, the, the depression and the anxiety amongst kids it i don't know that we've ever seen an epidemic of that like we are now you know, can you, I mean, I just can't even imagine being 16 or 17 and trapped at home with your parents 24 seven for months on end. I mean, yeah, my nephew um, just graduated from high school and just turned 18. Can you imagine? And, um, you know, missed his prom and it was the high school valedictorian and had to give a speech online. You know, he, he's actually handling it pretty well, but it's like, he can't see his friends. He can't see his friends before they go to college. It's just horrible. Yeah. There's a lot of loss. You know, I think that's what we have to remember is that there's every day there's loss. There's a lot of people losing family members. We've lost our sense of freedom to move about. Um, we've lost our sense of, even if it might be a false sense, but a sense of safety and security. Um, financially, people are not feeling uh, safe and protected. And so there's just, there, there's so much loss and people are in mourning and I don't know that they even recognize that they're in mourning for the life that we had or believed we had and the life we have now and then the unknown of what's coming forward. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of my yoga teaching helps in these moments because it helps you stay in the present moment and, and you know, and acknowledge how you feel to be in your feelings and not, not stress yourself out more to that you shouldn't feel bad or you shouldn't, shouldn't, I say you, you don't should on yourself. And, and so, you know, to try to just understand that this is a period of flux. And I, I personally believe a lot of really good things are going to come out of this that we needed. We needed some major wake up calls. I think earth is so happy right now. You know, she's just been in bliss the last few months because we've stopped abusing her. So hopefully we can get some sense of responsibility for the bigger picture and not be so centered on what each of us are getting every day. Not like she didn't warn us. We've had we've had decades worth of warning. Oh yeah. No, she's she's been. I say those are like knock 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 knock, and then bam. <laughs> Look how beautiful yeah. it is out here. It's so green it's, and and it's beautiful. So it's clear. You know that the skies are clearer than they've ever been here. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like the the sky is just a blue or blue. I mean, it's everything just looks different and. And so, you know, I think we need to, we need to try to find a little, little bits that we can be grateful about because gratitude definitely is a healer of the heart and you can't be in gratitude and in fear at the same time. So not that, not that the fear is unjustified, but, you know, I talk to people about, well, at least find a couple of moments a day that you can look for something to feel grateful for. 
yeah. to give yourself a little break because that flight or fight always going on in that stress mode that wears us out and that actually is the antithesis of health and protection of your health because you can't be healthy and in flight or fight all the time that's a virtual impossibility mm. so you know it's it's just just awareness and i think giving people permission of a place to vent is really critical because we all we all feel a little guilty about feeling bad especially because we all know there's people worse off than us yeah. you know we look around and go i mean i'm, I'm in a great house I've, I've got enough food i i'm not i'm not harmed in any way knock on wood i haven't lost any relatives yet i mean you know so i am very grateful for for the position i'm in and and i am deeply saddened for the, some of my friends that aren't in that same position so how do you see some of these people i mean what's the dating world going to be like i think mike and i were talking you know a couple of days ago you know what's been happening with you know tender and grinder and all the stuff stuff that i've never gone on but me i'm single and i was like well this is interesting do i want to go to this club well no you know i know where where i've been I haven't been with anybody. I haven't been anywhere. I've been just doing all my stuff as the numbers have been going up, but I also saw it coming. So I had a year and a half to, to prepare. And that's all I was doing because a year and a half goes quick. Because I can yeah. tell everything that I was doing leading up to where we are today. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so thankful for that. And I'm happy for those people that I chose, those sponsors that I chose, because their businesses are skyrockers. They are first responders now, those people that I chose back then. And that's why I chose them. And they're like thinking, how did you know? I'm like, I tried to tell people, so didn't Planet Earth. There, there, was, there was a couple of us out there, but how do you tell everybody things are going to come to a screeching halt? This yeah. be oh, nobody would believe that. Absolutely no. not. You know, you're I mean, not going to be able to go out now. and do it. <laughs> it's yeah. funny because I have, I have um, some young friends who are in their 20s who uh, have, are part of a, a gay fraternity uh, uh, in Southern California, and <clears throat> they... Uh, uh, they have they had weekend sex parties uh, that had a lot of people, a lot of guys coming over, and they were closing up the house. And when the pandemic started, it was just the four of them. So they were actually, you know, occasionally going online and telling people, "Yeah, the four of us are here, and and uh, uh, we're uh, we're still, you know, we're still fooling around with each other." But then now I recently saw a post and they said, we're kind of getting tired of each other. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it can last a hundred days, but you know, even though they have four of them, it's sort of like, yeah, you know what? It's getting a little boring. We want to change of, uh, change of scenery. Some new actors. <laughs> so, so even, you know, even when you have your own kind of con confined uh, group, it, it, it could get, and, and you know that you're all safe you know uh, how do you how do you then take the next step i mean it's yeah kind of scary. it is and i think you know thank i mean fortunately for for where we are in time we have this inner thing called the internet <laughs> we have the ability to have kind of a meeting like this and cp at least get some face time and some you know the reading of body language and that kind of communication and I think there is a, there's going to be a different de degree of trustworthiness that we're going to have to expect from people. And this, this is perfect uh, segue into the sexual world of STIs. You know, people have been incredibly cavalier about STIs and, and, and you know, not necessarily forthcoming about their status. And so with COVID, I mean, this is, this is kind of like it was when, when we first had AIDS, you know, the HIV fear. I remember I was in nursing, early nursing, when, the, when we had HIV come out, and everybody was scared to death. You know, the healthcare providers were afraid. Everybody was afraid. And so we have that level of fear now about COVID. So hopefully some of the things we're doing that protect us from that kind of disease passing will move into our consciousness about STIs as well. It's like, okay, maybe we should be a little more precautious. Maybe we should ask to see your health certificate. You know, I, I think that's gonna be required to travel 
we're going to have to have a health certificate. So maybe we could do that for sex parties too. You know, show me your health certificate. When did you do that? And then there's going to all, there's always going to be some degree of risk. We just have to be try to minimize it to the best we can. But unless you're celibate and isolated right now, solo, there's, there's no chance that you aren't at some risk. You know, just going to the grocery store right now is a risk. So it's just trying to keep that minimal and, and have conversations with people, honest, open, you know, conversations where you have to reveal your truths so that if you want to get together with somebody, you have some kind of, some kind of uh, camaraderie or, or, um, I don't know, just uh, an acknowledgement of, of, I kind of owe you my honesty because this is a life or death thing, right? And and you know, and then get together cautiously. Well, that's, uh, you might give my my old co-host Bill Margo. Um, he created uh, the testing, you know, AIM Adult Industry Medical back in 1995, and so all those adult performers uh, had their tests, their tests that were good for 30 days. So, and I took that just to have that so I could say, hey, here's my test, show me yours. And then the yeah. just used to be with these guys and women were, well, I had my insurance test. Well, when was that? Oh, I, you know, six months ago or a year ago, I'm like, here's mine, show me yours, because that doesn't mean anything. So I have a feeling, I've been, I've been telling everybody this since, you know, 2018, we're going to have to go back to those days where here's my test the last two weeks. I don't know how good it's valid for. It could be valid for seven days, could be valid for 14. We don't know, but at least I have something. Where is yours? Yeah, yeah but with this, with COVID, I mean, yeah, you're right. Uh, the AIDS test where you were only was, was only was as good as your last sex partner, but the, the, the COVID is like, you have to do it every day. I mean, it's you to, to be a, you know, test. I mean, I, I, my partner and I got tested um, two months ago because he came back from New Orleans and thought maybe, you know, he was there during Mardi Gras. And, and so oh, we were God. concerned and I had a little bit of a fever for a while. So we got tested right away. But that was, you know, still two months ago now. And, and you know, it, we, one of us still could be affected. Well, and, and I think what, you know, we know now that, that within 14 days of exposure, if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. And if, 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 you're, if you don't get sick and you are exposed, you, you can't really be a spreader after that 14 days. So it's, you know, the virus has its, its life cycle. So if, you know, and this is what my husband and I did when we planned to go see our kids in Southern California, because one of them's pregnant. So we, we tested. And then we, we waited for the results and then we isolated for 14 days so that we weren't exposed to anybody else. And then we saw the kids. So we knew we were negative going in. We had that 14 day window where we, we couldn't be exposed to anybody new so that if, if that test, if we missed it after that 14 days, we would know that if one of us was sick. And then, and they had all been isolated, you know, to, working from home, not with, not around any other human beings other than themselves. So if, if we want to get together with a partner, then we have to kind of set up a how to proceed uh, system. And I've written several articles actually on um, our clinics websites, the Hilltop Medical Clinics, clinics.com or clinic.com and about your pod and creating a, a uh, you know, uh, an isolation group um, where you know where people have been. You know, you 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 can get. You know, the, I think the main thing is you want to be able to trace. So if if you both have been only to a few places around a couple of people, then if one of you gets sick, you can trace and isolate. So it's not, it's not so much a matter of, oh, I'm never going to get it, because chances are we're all going to get this at some point. And most of us will get a mild case of it. But it's the community spread that's impossible to trace and then stop. Because if you can't trace it, you can't stop it. 
So for example, up in Northern California, we just had a family that had a big um, graduation party for one of their kids. There were 14 people that were at this family party. They let their guard down. They were all in the same house. They were all hugging. I mean, it was a, you know, they just kind of pretended like COVID didn't exist for that day. 11 of those people are positive now. Wow. Wow. That's scary. It, it is. Um, however, but they're all traceable. They can all trace everybody they've been exposed to, and those people are now isolated. So it stops there. So now, now we're not going to get the exponential increase from the community spread. It's the community spread that really should scare the shit out of us. Because when we don't know where people are, are that are spreading it, if we have people that are just out there spreading it, we can't, we can't contain it. It's a wildfire with, with spot fires going everywhere. And we know about fires here. So it's really a matter of just keep your pod small. So that if that if it does somebody does get sick, you can stop it. I've got, it, I've got I think I, I got about 60 seconds. I'm gonna end this show. But Nancy, Dr. Pierce, give you a website so people can contact you if they want to book a session. It's uh, www.drnsp.com. So drnsp as in Nancy Sutton Pierce.com. And Mike, give yours. Uh, I'm on Amazon, uh, look under Mickey Ski, uh, and um, you can find this book, and uh, under Mike Szymanski, you can find my Dachshund books. I have because oh, he loves his dogs. We're, we're, we're dog family here also. Awesome. Uh, so with that, I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. We wanted to do a part two, so this is part one of this, because she has so much information. And, you know, on this part two, I wanted to get into, so how do you go into dating? Because... What you were talking about, that's, that's like, wow. And so for me, being by myself, I know exactly where I've been, no place, except for the two stores and to the park on my Segway by myself. So again, I'm suspicious of everybody else. So they're all calling me. So we're going to continue. I'm going to end this and we're going to go into that. And then we're going to talk about parties because they got parties going on and talk about other states that are not doing well. And they're like, nothing to see here. Everything is going okay which is not the case. So we will see you next week. So for all those people, you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because we all need it. We'll see you next week.